Hey there, hey, it's Michelle with Brilliant Quest. And today we're going to be talking about survival and its true purpose unlocked. So we're going to start with looking at the definition. And I'm using um, the original. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when you look at a word and if it closely matches or aligns with how it was originally used, then that word has a lot of power. And guess what? survival does. Now, a lot of people in today's environment think of survival as an endurance test of pain, suffering, and of when you're not doing well. But if we look at it the way we still use it today in certain applications and the history of it, we're going to be able to unlock more of it to help us. All right. So I pulled this definition from Etymology Online and the definition is derived from or the base of it is derived from the 1400s or the mid 15th century and this is what it says it says now this is paraphrasing some of it i'll put i'll put it up here uh it's a transitive state meaning that it is to outlive live longer than continue in existence after some point in time or death of another you see surviving and survival was for the purpose of the winner getting the spoils or the beneficiary of an inheritance. And so survival always meant that it came with rewards. So keep it in mind, does that sound like how people are talking about, well, I'm just trying to survive, make it day by day. Might we be confusing survival with suffering? Now, suffering is a component of surviving. How else would you make it through? But it is not the equivalent of surviving. So let's dig down a little deep so that we can really get this to start working on our behalf, okay? So I got my notes. Uh, as I said before, as the survivor is the beneficiary of uh, the reward, one of the ways to unlock survival is to realize that some of the greats like Martin Luther King, and even the Bible and, and other great philosophers have talked about dying to the self daily. And so when you die to the self daily, the next morning when you wake up, you are the survivor of that previous version. So that means that you get to inherit and become the beneficiary of the rewards that the previous self has worked and gained and accumulated. And so you kind of get a shortcut to your new day. Um, and the Bible even talks about how we wake each morning with a brand new mercy that we must carry our cross, you know, but kill ourselves daily to have a rebirth. And so throughout history, cultures and time, they understood some of the true benefits of being the survivor. Even the, the U.S. based show Survivor and part of it, it uses the definition and it adds one that I really like. And, and so it, it says, you know, you're going to outwit, outsmart, outlast Survivor. And it's amazing that we look at these shows. Now, I haven't really looked at them, <laughs> but as a society, we look at these shows which are showing us that, yes, they did suffer. They did go through, but they had a definite goal. It was definitely for a time. And if you were the last one standing, you would get the reward. And so to me, that show is an excellent example of some of the things that we can learn and glean for how to make surviving work for us. And so when you become a benefactor, I mean, a beneficiary of your benefactor of your previous self each day you wake up, there are some things that you need to realize. And I like to put them like this, that what you're going to do, and you may have heard this term before, but if not, here it is. And that when you get up the next morning, don't be like, oh, another day. No, be thankful. And you're going to take this. This is, this is one of the steps to being able to make surviving work for you. You're going to eat the fish and leave the bones. That's the saying that we have. And like I said, you've probably heard of it. Now, the funny part is about fish. Fish is symbolic. Now, you can think about, yeah, actual fish for nutrients and leaving the bones. You can't really do anything with the fish bones. But if you look at the symbology of fish, it takes on a whole new understanding. So, of course, I'm going to tell you what that symbology is. So the fish represents rebirth, change, health, um, luck. Uh -huh. It also uh, represents fertility, abundance. The higher self, which is your unconscious or subconscious, stability, hindsight, you know, being 2020, balance and tranquility. So if you take, sorry, allergies, if you take the understanding of I am the receiver of all the things that previous person when you went to bed, all the things that they accumulated as a survivor, you get to pick the good stuff. You get to eat the fish and leave the bones. And so that means that you get all the good luck all the stability, the tranquility. You get the benefits of what higher self has revealed to you because you got the hindsight 2020 version of what previous self did. That is a surviving everyday benefit that we get. And too many times I've done this, I can't speak for you, but too many times in the past when I didn't know better, I 
would push all that away and only take the bad stuff, the hard stuff, the stuff that didn't feel good into the next day. Because you know what? You can benefit from whichever you, do, you decide to choose. And, I, and I, <laughs> there's this other saying that says, forgetting that which is behind me. I turn and I press toward the mark of the high calling. That's another tip off that you survived. You get to benefit from the good stuff and the, you get to pick it. And so when you die to self daily, don't forget, don't pick back up the stuff that you, you that doesn't feel good. So if you have to take, not have to, but take the lessons, take the benefits of what you've gone through. You know, so there is no, but you don't have anything good to look. Yes, you do. You survived. You woke up this day and now you know more than the person who went to bed last, uh, last night does. Now you have a different perspective because it's past you and you have the gift of hindsight. So that's a benefit. All right. So the next thing is, is when you're in survival mode, your objective is to not just endure the situation. It is to outlast, outsmart, outwit, so that you can get to the last person standing. And I say this because I have found for myself when I'm talking to others and everybody's like, I'm just in survival mode. I'm just trying to make it. No, that's suffering mode. Survival mode is for the purpose. It is a transit uh, from one state to another. It is for the purpose of having an end with a reward in mind. And so looking at this, there are things that you must be doing in your survival mode. You must be growing for the purpose of winning. And when people find themselves in harsh times, they are quick to try to go into a sustaining mode to live. And that's fine. But don't get that confused with survival because that's not what survival is. So let's talk a little bit about suffering. OK, now in this life, you will have problems, you will have struggles. But knowing that the trying of your soul, <laughs> the, the, the suffering you are enduring is going to make you better, stronger, greater. And so suffering is not something that is bad in and of itself. It is part of the human experience because suffering is here to provide us with friction. Now, if you're looking at this from, you know, some of the religious understandings, you know, the, the Buddhist and that kind of stuff, it takes on more nuances and complexity where you're getting to the point where you're starting to be aware of what we call attachments, attachments to things, um, attachments to this life, bringing about suffering. But to keep this as straight and to the point as possible, we will acknowledge that, yes, Suffering does come by way of our attachments to things in this life, but we will also look at suffering as a vehicle to help us get in to the, uh, the aftermath, if you will, of surviving. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, the first thing is, is <coughs> excuse me, let's look at suffering. So suffering says it's the patient enduring of pain, inconvenience, and loss. Doesn't it sound like what most people think surviving is? Yeah, I thought so. Well, with suffering, suffering brings gifts of hard won, hard won uh, insights and knowledge and experience. Case in point, as an author, I um, I deal with different genres. Now, one of the genres that I've just never really been into creating or even uh, <laughs> enjoying was the dystopian genre. And the dystopian genre is usually something in the future where life is very hard. There's a lot of suffering and pain. There's usually uh, oppressive governments and people have to ink out a living and it's dismal and dark and, and all those types of things. So that's a dystopian uh, type of genre. But dystopian, just like zombie and horror, dystopian is a tool for people to cosplay how to get out of suffering. You see, it's something about how we are able to outsmart and outlast certain situations in life that we will create fiction. We will create stories to be able to form uh, recipes, steps, processes, parables, if you will, uh, to get out of certain situations. And one of the things about the dystopian genre, if you will, you always are aware of the fact that people have to first and foremost deal with what it means to exist what it means to outlast something and what it means to thrive. So like if you're looking at Hunger Games, uh, it's not just enough for Katniss, which is a dystopian um, based genre. It's not just enough for Katniss to go in and to survive the trials. No, she brings not only that, but thriving to the people where it's about overthrowing mm -hmm, this dictatorial government. It's about changing so that you are the last person standing to reap the benefits, not just for Katniss, but for her people. And if you go and you look at um, 
I was going to call out another one and it escaped me. <laughs> but if you go and you look at all of these different uh, uh, current type of dystopian uh, types of uh, shows and movies and things. It is all about winning. It's all about reaping some type of benefit. So every time we look around, we look and we, we are confronted with the fact that survival is really about thriving. Mm -hmm. And for too long, I and others have thought that you survive first, then you get to thrive. But we didn't realize that thriving is a component of surviving. So what do you mean, Michelle? What I mean is this, is that when you are suffering, suffering stinks, it hurts. And so there is a natural impetus to try to uh, reduce the amount of suffering. And in the, even in the way we cope with our world now, we find ways to, to make these frames, if you will, of reducing that so that we can get to the thriving because you need thriving in survival for you to have that impetus to push forward, to win, to outlast, to be the beneficiary of the rewards that the situation is going to give the victor. And so I'm going to talk really quickly about uh, um, a thinking or talking and thinking modality uh, in therapy, if you will. So just bear with me for just a minute. I promise it's, it's not that hard and you've probably been using it and don't even realize it. OK, so it is called dialectical behavioral therapy and it is an offshoot or a child of cognitive behavioral therapy. So it kind of like tells you cognitive behavioral, that's thinking the mind, that's thinking and processing emotion, thoughts and feelings in a, in a, in a, a way that gives the practitioner, not the practitioner, but the, the client the power. Dialectical started as a, a way to talk it through, but then there became models, if you will, to help people to understand how to deal with intense emotions and all of these things, mental suffering. And so dialectical behavioral therapy became known as uh, DBT. And simply know this, there are uh, things that happen in your life. And when you're doing DBT, you are learning to accept the pains and that life sucks and that what you're feeling is valid. So that's the, accept, uh, the acceptance part of it. And then the next part of it is the change part. That's where you start working through talking, journaling, writing, uh, creating, if you will, uh, how to manage your emotions, your thoughts, and your behaviors. So remember those, those are two things, accept, that what has happened to you, what you feel is valid, it's real, whether anybody else believes you or not, is real. And number two is working on changing it. Now, the way DBT does this and, and why it works so well with helping you to understand surviving and the place for suffering and thriving is this, that it gives you three different minds, if you will. So you have a rational, or excuse me, uh, you have a, uh, re uh, re y'all forgive me. Oh my God, reasonable. Yes, you have a reasonable mind. I always like to call it rational because they named it reasonable. I always think of it as rational because it means the logical mind. OK, then you have an emotional mind. So whereas the reasonable me saying rational, reasonable mind is all about being logical, you know, common sense, if you will. The emotional mind is about feelings, feelings, emotions, behaviors. OK, then you have the third mind, which is the wise mind. And the wise mind is the middle ground between the two where they pick the best of both sides. So rational or, re or reasonable mind is that logical part of you that kicks in when everything's okay. Mm -hmm. When you can think straight, when you don't have the pressure of where am I going to eat? Uh, how, how am I going to clothe myself? What, where am I going to sleep? And then emotional is that side that's doing all that. I got to survive. See how we use that word? And so when you get into the wise mind of it, it is where you can remain logical and rational while you are being fueled by the need to take care of that stuff, but not letting it throw you off kilter so that you can't function, so that you get into a wise mind. Yeah. And so by using these formats, if you will, of DBT, it helps you to start getting back into this center of uh, the middle ground of the wise mind so that as you are going through difficult times of surviving, you stay the path. And that allows you to make use of the suffering, get the lesson, don't keep if, if at all possible, don't keep doing something. It's kind of like this statement uh, this that I heard. I, I wish I could remember who said it, but it, it's about uh, it's, it's a story where a guy comes into a store uh, like a little country store and there's a hound dog laying by the door, just moaning and, uh, and just groaning. And the customer asked the, the store keep, what's wrong with the dog? Why is the dog crying and moaning? And the store keep says, oh, he's just laying on a nail. And the guy's like, laying on a nail? Well, what, why don't you help him? He's like, no, he'll get up when he's tired of laying on the nail. And that in itself is a summation of what happens when you truly start to activate the lessons and the blessings of survival. 
because survival is the impetus to help you shortcut or stop unnecessary suffering because it forces the suffering to turn into something useful to give you energy to move forward. And that energy to move forward is the thriving. Mm -hmm. You see, because with thriving, thriving is, it comes from the 13th century, uh, the 1200s, where, do you know what thriving means? Thriving means to grasp to yourself, to seize it. It also means to flourish. And to flourish means to bloom or blossom from a flower. And so thriving lives within survival because survival is the fertile soil to make something bloom out of the knowledge it got from the suffering of life. Because in this life, you will have troubles. You will not be able to circumvent suffering. In this life, you will need to survive because surviving is the way that you live so that you can be the beneficiary of going through the trial, the test. And life is kind of like a string of, of problems and tests that you go through. If not, you would die because there would be nothing to keep you here. You would be like, what's the meaning of life? I, you know, all those types of things. That's another video. Okay, so what, what I do want to say is this, is that um, suffering is not surviving. Suffering is a component of surviving. Thriving can be within surviving. And surviving is not a bad thing. Surviving means you are the winner. Because what is a survivor? A survivor is the one that, in the, the way uh, this word came into being, survivor was the person who made it to the law office to get the will read to tell them what they inherited from the, the, the benefactor, the person who passed on. Remember, it's to outlive someone, to survive them. And so we're wanting to make sure that we understand that you don't have to outlive somebody else except for yourself. Every day you get a brand new mercy. Mm -hmm. You're going to, when you wake up in the morning, you're going to choose to eat the fish and leave the bones because the fish is the rebirth. It's the luck. It's the health. It's the tranquility, stability, the hindsight 2020. And you're going to choose to take the rewards from previous self that went to bed last night. Not all the problems, the issues, and the what ifs, because you have hindsight and you can pick and choose the great stuff that you want to take into this day with you to help you along, all right? So I wanna talk just a little bit more about using these tools that I've talked about with the DVT, you know, the dialectical uh, behavioral therapy. Don't let that word, you know, turn you off. I have talked a lot about journaling and how cathartic it is and how you can get a lot out of it. And as part of DVT, these are some of the formats that they use. And so when you are going through struggle, you can use your journal to not only spew out all the stuff you're going through, but to track your emotions and your progress. You can daily say, okay, I made it through another day. This is what I got done. This is where I need to work a little bit harder on. This is what I'm gonna take into the new day with me so that I will be cognizant of it and put intention to it. Then you can also uh, work toward finding what's the middle ground, determining what is your wise mind. And so when you're journaling, when you're doing this, this writing, you can work on what gets me into this sweet spot where I can be reasonable, you know, rational, less the logical. I can still be tapped into my emotions so that I can be aware of myself, my self needs, and the center that keeps me stable and combine them to be your wise mind, your highest self. And by doing that, when you are going through difficult things, understand that they came to pass, not to, not to stay. Remember, surviving is not a, a, a state of staticness. Surviving is for the purpose of winning. It has that word outlast in it and outlive in it for a reason. Surviving came to pass, not to stay. Use these things to help you and understand, if nothing else, there is a reward for putting up with this and that suffering is not surviving. Suffering is here to give you traction, to give you the lessons, to give you the insights so that you can outsmart, outlast, outwit, outlive, okay? And when you are thriving, thriving within survival is to bring you over the finish point. Remember, not only is it to clasp to your chest, but it's also to flourish and to flourish is to bloom. And so the thriving within surviving is to bloom out of the fertile soil that you have gathered while you've been running this race to get you over the finish line. So yes, thank you so much. I want you to check the links in the description, leave a comment, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, press the notification button, and check out this next video. And I'm gonna see you sooner than later. This is Michelle, your big sis with Brilliant Quest. Bye.